So we knew from the moment that this race went to the runoff that it was going to be a win for establishment Democrats in Denver. There's not a strong progressive candidate in the runoff. So that left progressive hopes hinging on a couple of city council campaigns in which the Democratic Socialists of America Denver chapter, they have their champion on council, Candy C. DeBaca. And there is no one in Colorado politics that Republicans and establishment Democrats want to take out of office more than Candy C. DeBaca because of what a lightning rod she is for various leftist causes. And as it stands now, she faces an enormous gap in her race against Daryl Watson and the newly drawn District 9. A 36 point deficit earlier tonight is now 33 points. But even if Candy C. DeBaca's uh, famously late arriving supporters came in heavy on Election Day, 33 points is a lot of ground to make up. In the two other races, uh, the race between Chantel Lewis and Brad Rivera, uh, Chantel Lewis is the DSA, the Democratic Socialist endorsed candidate. That's too close to call. That's the best chance for the Democratic Socialist to add a second seat on council, in addition to at large winner Sarah Parody from April. And then incumbent Chris Hines appears to be fending off a challenge from Democratic Socialist endorsed candidate Shannon Hoffman in their race. So it will appear that the number of Democratic Socialists on Denver City Council will either remain at one or potentially grow to two. And the next mayor of Denver, likely Mike Johnston, if results hold, is not going to have a city council that is any more left of the current one. Kim? Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. I think there's a little bit of a surprise when you look at the council and not necessarily what some of the polling has told us with the mayor's race. But, of course, we want to hear from both of them. We want to hear from Kelly Bruff and Mike Johnston soon, hopefully. Yeah, and I think that we will hear from both of them tonight because you got to remember when it comes to concession speeches and victory speeches on election night, so much of it has to do with the personality of the candidates and the relationship between the two of them, how respectful that is. In this case, you've got two establishment Democrats who have been around for a long time, are going to be around for a long time to come. They're very personally friendly. They like each other, hug hello. Uh, they don't disagree on a whole lot. They're not going to go out of their way to be disrespectful to one another tonight, nor are they going to go out of the way to, to ruffle feathers with an early declaration of victory tonight. So if this gap holds, continues to grow perhaps with the 10 o'clock drop, maybe that's the point when Kelly Bruff calls Mike Johnson to concede. But I, I don't get the sense at all that he's going to rush out here to make a premature declaration of, of victory. It just doesn't fit with his personality or their relationship. Yeah, it's been nice to have two people that actually genuinely like each other. So we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Kyle.